Hello, it's been a very long time since I podcasted and in that time a lot has happened. Uh, we got a global pandemic, I learned to spin and I've had quite a bit more time to do all my crafty stuff than I otherwise normally would. Um, I've been having fun these past couple of weeks trying to make myself tools out of household objects. Um, some have been more successful than others. But today I want to share with you a um, make your own drop spindle. Now, there's a caveat. I'm not a brilliant drop spinner, spindler, drop, whatever. Um, but I did manage to make one and it kind of works. I'll insert a video of it actually working here. But um, I thought people might be interested to see how I went about it with some very easy to find household goods. So here's what you're gonna need if you want to make a drop spindle like the one I made. On the right, um, we've got just a normal standard piece of wooden doweling. Um, I actually bought this off Amazon because at the time, um, none of the DIY shops were open, but it's a fairly standard um, DIY piece of kit, I think. I don't know. Another caveat, I don't really do DIY. Um, this one, just in case you want to know, is about nine millimetres in diameter, um, and that seems to be fairly standard. Um, you can see in there there's a tiny little cup hook. Um, these are actually the type of hooks that are used on the end of those curtain poles and I picked up one very, very cheaply. Um, in fact, I had a, a stash of them for my other wheels um, as replacement wheels. Got a couple of elastic bands in there and the piece de resistance, an empty, cleaned out tin of some sort. It doesn't have to be Heinz, it doesn't have to be Heinz spaghetti bolognese, but it's a treat if you do that too. Additionally, the tools that you might need are um, a can opener, um, some sandpaper, and this is just a kind of multi-purpose um, Boy Scout pen knife thing, but it's got a, quite a cool application tool on it that um, I used um, for piercing a hole. So, first things first, we're gonna get the whirl ready. Just a standard ring pull can, tin, tin can um, that you'll find anywhere. Um, it's got one of these ring pull tops. We don't need to worry about that. For this, we're gonna use the bottom. If you were normally going about opening a can, you might go about it this way with the sharp bit pointing down. But for this, we don't want a very sharp edge, so we're gonna use it the other way. So we have it like so with the roundy kind of bit um, in the top and the sharp cutting side going into the downward part. And what you have left is the ring, but it's got some jaggedy sharp bits on it and you can see there was a bit of a tug of war at the end. So we'll soften those down with an implement I forgot to talk about. Bits, so we're gonna take a pair of pliers and just bend those in so that they're not exposed. So we're just folding them in and out of the way so they're not gonna get involved in any of the, the yarn. Can you see that's just been flattened around there? Okay, so here we are. I've pushed down all the edges um, as much as I can. They're not super even, but they're not gonna be super sharp either. Um, I might just do a little bit more to make sure it doesn't catch on anything, catch on the yarn. Um, obviously for a spindle, you want things to be as even and as smooth as possible. So just bear that in mind when you're taking off its bottom. Okay, the next part is making a hole. Um, thankfully, this can has got um, a little dimple indicating where the centre is um, because you definitely want it to be in the centre. Um, in the pen knife, um, it 
had this kind of, it's not so a we're going to take that borer thing and make a hole just there. Um, this is kind of an outside job and apparently shouldn't be done on uh, antique tables. Okay, I've made a hole. It's not very neat. Um, I'm going to smooth it out and make sure that my dowel fits through it. Okay, still not big enough. Need to do a bit more. Okay, we've got through the top now. As you can see, it's not a perfect, perfect fit, but you don't want it to be too big because you want it to be snug on the dowel. So once you've managed to make the hole and put the dowel through, this is where the elastic bands come in. I've put one underneath and I'm about to put another on top just to make sure it doesn't wiggle around. Okay, now with elastic bands in place, it also has the added bonus of just keeping anything away from the um, jaggedy bits, which aren't too jaggedy now, I've hammered them down. So we're nearly there, but we need the crucial bit, which is the hook on top of the stick. If you grab the little hook, you can see it's got little screws in there already, and this is a fairly soft wood, so we just need to get it as central as we can and work it in. I found that um, anchoring the hook with the pliers and using that as a kind of holder in place while I twist the dowel in has helped get it gain traction. So there you have it, um, a homemade, very quick drop spindle. There's the one I made earlier. Um, I'm going to sand this down now um, so that there are no rough edges for any yarn or fibre to get stuck on and I think I'm probably going to take a bit off the bottom. There are a couple of inches there that I don't think, I think that will probably be a bit too long. But there you go. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Please take care if you're using sharp implements and if you're a kid don't do this by yourself. And um, yeah, I'm not an expert spinner or an expert spindler, or an expert drop spindle maker. But that was my take, and I thought you'd be interested to see.